One thing that has marked this general election uh, more than ever before uh, the seven-phase marathon actually starts has been the staggering amounts of cash that have been seized. The Election Commission's latest data released today shows that 378 crores of cash have actually been recovered by authorities, 128 crores of that from Tamil Nadu alone. It proves that black money still plays a big role in the world's largest election exercise. Meanwhile, the Congress has claimed to have busted a cash for votes scandal in Pasigat in Arunachal Pradesh, which is what Shama was referring to, where uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrested a rally this morning. Around midnight, 1.8 crores in cash was recovered by the police in the presence of Election Commission officials from a local guest house. The Congress claims the money was found in a car belonging to a BJP candidate, though the Chief Minister says it's wrong to claim this had anything to do with the BJP, while the specific allegation against the candidate is being probed by the EC. And then there is this other debate on electoral bonds. These were introduced by the government last year, apparently to make election funding more transparent, but they've ended up being far more murky. Basically, anyone can buy these bonds through the State Bank of India and donate the money to a political party, but their identity is completely confidential. The latest data shows that 1,716 crores worth of bonds have been sold since January this year, most of them worth more than 13 and a half uh, 100 crores were sold between the first 15 days of March alone, just around the time the election dates were announced. And incidentally, all of last year, 1,056 crores worth of bonds were sold. So it's just incredible how much money has been pumped into political parties in just the first three months of this year. Just how transparent is the electoral bond scheme introduced last year by the government which said it would curb black money in political funding? Maybe not that much, since the identity of the donors is kept confidential. NDTV has accessed data compiled by the Finance Ministry in response to the petitions challenging the electoral bond scheme in Supreme Court. It shows that around a week before and during the week the general election dates were announced, between March 1st and 15th, around 2742 electoral bonds were sold, worth Rs 1,365 crores. This is a staggering 516% more than the value of electoral bonds sold in March 2018. In all, bonds worth Rs 1,716 crore rupees have been sold so far since January 2019. Compare that to all of 2018, where bonds worth only Rs 1,056 crores were sold for the entire year. The electoral bonds are sold by the State Bank of India, which have to be encashed by the political parties within 14 days. Anyone can buy these bonds and their information is kept confidential. Such massive influence by money on the electoral process, I believe, is, is not good for democracy. The Congress has promised to scrap these bonds in their manifesto, saying that there is total lack of transparency. But the BJP says this is a far better way of funding elections since the State Bank of India knows who has purchased the bonds. The election bond scheme is a fraud and it is basically a method for the BJP to launder money. Everyone who prefers dealing in cash is opposed to the electoral bond scheme. What does cash funding of elections means? The donor is not known. The party to which he gives it is not known. The source is not known. Who brought that money into the party is not known. The Election Commission of India, while responding to a petition challenging this electoral bond scheme in Supreme Court, has also expressed reservations on the lack of transparency. Most of the opposition parties have been opposing this electoral bond scheme, saying this would benefit and favour only the ruling party. In fact, the first phase of the scheme, that is, March 2018 saw electoral bonds worth 220 crores being sold, out of which 210 crores, that is, 94.5 percentage of the entire amount was donated to the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party. With the Election Commission of India not in favour, will the scheme pass the legal scrutiny of Supreme Court? With Nidhi Rajdan Aravind for NDTV. Well, we have Dr. S.Y. Qureshi, the former Chief Election Commissioner, joining us shortly here. Uh, we uh, have M.K. Venu, the founding editor of The Wire. Professor Trilochan Shastri of the Association for Democratic Reforms is with us. Uh, the ADR uh, is one of those that has petitioned the Supreme Court against electoral bonds. Uh, also still with us, Shama Mohammed of the Congress and Bhaskar Ghosh of the BJP. Uh, Professor Shastri, just to come to you first, it's actually staggering, you know, just the amounts of cash that have been seized in this election already. I mean, we haven't actually even started uh, with the, uh, with the, 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 the voting process. Uh, but 
you you look at the cash seized you look at the way you know these electoral bonds are sort of you know financing political parties in in, in the, this very obfuscated way and then one has to ask uh, you know is black money running our general election absolutely in fact this black money and electoral bonds are the two biggest threats to indian democracy and uh, it's very nice and uh, we congratulate the election commission for having taken the right stand in the supreme court so we are all waiting uh, to see what the supreme court says so we welcome the stand of the election commission and all the arguments are well known the fact is the emperor has no clothes political parties whichever they are they are only interested in winning elections and they will give every argument in the book to justify what they are doing but black money continues and electoral bonds continues to be dark money which we don't know where it is coming from one of the so arguments it's high time we made uh, transparency and sorry so just to one of the arguments that the the government keeps giving in favor of ele electoral bonds mr shastri is that uh, at the end of the day they have to be purchased through the state bank of india and therefore uh, the bank will know the identity of the person who is donating the money uh, even if uh, that is not made public now is that a good enough argument no not at all if we are following best practices internationally whether it is the united states or european countries or japan every rupee or naya paisa collected by the by the political parties is known to the public i think we should follow the same in india we have kyc we have aadhar we have all kinds of norms for citizens why don't we have the same norms for uh, political parties and everything is digital so let the election commission also digitally receive money and let every rupee be accounted for so that the public knows where it's coming from well let me take that to mr uh, mr bhaskar ghosh mr so ghosh last time uh, uh, mr ghosh last time you were on this program it was before the election commission actually went to the supreme court and said that it thinks electoral bonds are not transparent now that the election commission of india has taken that position in the court what do you what would you say would you still stick to this uh, defense of electoral bonds see in the last uh, debate i have already mentioned that this is not an electoral reform this is basically the digital encouraging the digital payment in case of the electoral funding or the political funding now you, if you see that uh, these bonds could be only purchased from designated branch of sbi and with a certain periods it could be encashed and it could be given to only those political parties who are registered under section 290 of representation of people act 1951 and they should have minimum 1% of the vote share so there is a qualification criteria for that now come the caesar of 1500 crore once again it is established no, that Mr. as Bush, because our cash i'm asking you something else i'm asking you that the election commission of india doesn't feel that this is a transparent way to fund political parties the election commission this is not the opposition it's not you know a political body it's the election commission so why is the bjp continuing to insist that it wants electoral bonds is it a coincidence that most money through electoral bonds has actually gone to the bjp so far see this is uh, first of all bjp is not uh, is very uh, not very uh, sacrosanct about that the, uh, electoral bonds is the only means we have started this concept and to minimize and to track to track the black money which was used 100% into the uh, elections and if election commission has got some observation they have come so they can go to supreme court and supreme court gives a judgment then we obviously will look look into it but our intention is to trail the black money which we are to a great extent we are successful in trading the black money because every money which is coming through electoral bonds is properly registered and notified then we have lokpal today if i got any problem you can go to lokpal and you can file a petition and and find things will happen but our policy intention was no, that to track the um, black money or track the cash money and, yeah, don't, and, and don't, that uh, is see, that is going really well uh, panelist just so, look at the amount of second, cash that have been seized one of my mr. fellow panelist he was talking but, about the incidents of euro Ghosh, i was in us for long time mr ghosh US, just look at look at the hundreds US, of crores that have already Japan, been seized in they cash they are not a mixed economy we are the mixed economy no, that's lovely but 
can you please explain how hundreds of crores I'll ask MK Venu that because then what was the point of demonetization what was this whole argument that we're you know going after black money you see you know new notes now all the new notes now uh, which are being used to uh, illegally fund this election yeah I think today uh, I was, wa I was watching. Uh, I'm asking Mr. Venu that I'll question. Mr. This Mr. Well, I'll Let come back to you, Mr. Ghosh. Give was, me two minutes. Yeah. I, I was shocked today, Nidhi, that a, a convoy in Arunachal Pradesh, led by uh, where the Chief Minister was, the BJP leader was there. They found one MLA's in MLA's car, one lakh eighty uh, eighty thousand crore, oh. and they they they, be, they they behaved as if nothing has happened, as if this was uh, this is the way uh, the, uh, cash transactions are like new normal, you know, uh, and. And uh, two uh, two years ago, as you said, demonetization. They were talking about oh, digital payment, this, that, and the other. And number two, Nidhi, I'm, I want to tell you something. I'm astonished that Mr. Jaitley is making a virtue of the fact that nobody knows uh, electoral bonds, who the source is. Nobody knows who the po political party that uh, gets the money. Uh, now, number one, uh, we need total transparency, as somebody said, which is the best practice uh, across uh, re the rest of the world where democracy is practiced. Number two, Nidhi. It's State Bank of India, the government owned bank. Only BJP now knows through their, uh, because it owns the bank, it owns the bank, it knows uh, uh, so how much has gone to which party. And if there is a fear among the opposition that if, if people uh, through electoral bonds pay the opposition, then uh, then somebody might knock on the doors of those companies. So there is a, the, so you, you see what, I'm, uh, what I mean, right? You, you, you spread fear among businessmen and that fear will lead to those businessmen buying electoral bonds only for BJP. And I am told that more than 80 percent, 85 percent, some people say 90 percent uh, of electoral bond bonds have come from BJP, about 2,700 crores in the last uh, one year. And number three, Nidhi, the most pernicious uh, thing that is happening is that these people, they, they, they amended the F FCRA, Foreign Contribution Regulation Act, whereby they, yeah. they have allowed foreign companies which have a sub subsidiary in India. Yeah, uh, now to donate. And, and, and the Election are, Commission has yeah, red flagged that to yeah, the they, they have Court, Election Commission that has, has objected to that. to interference yeah. in Indian elections by yeah. foreign companies. Yeah, so need, let, let me complete. Yeah. There are so many companies, shell companies that, that ha have subsidiaries in India through Mauritius. In fact, some of these go government representatives, their sons have uh, such companies through Mauritius in India. I don't want to name. So, uh, how do you know that those, those money, laundered money is not coming back through that and buying electoral no, bonds? So, we know what the problems are, right? Yeah. We know what the problems mm -hmm. are. So, Shama Mohammed, uh, the Congress actually said it would scrap electoral bonds in the yes. manifesto that was released yesterday. What would you propose would be a better way to keep election funding clean? I'll tell you that. I'll just get to that. But what is the, what is the most important thing when, Menu, when Mr. Menu said is that, you know, they don't want to scrap these electoral bonds. This is so so murky. This Nobody knows who is the one who's do, uh, donating. No one knows. And let's see how the BJP has increased. His, um, uh, they had, they built uh, an office of 1,000, more than 1,000 crore. Where does the Bharatiya Janta Party get the money? And like he mentioned, when the banks know, the RBI knows. When RBI knows, who else knows? The government of the day knows. So that is like they are threatening all those business people who are donating to the Congress party through electoral bonds. Don't do that. We're going to have a tax rate. We're going to send ED. This is what is happening. Number two is that yesterday when they found this amount of money, there was an election commission observer there. Why isn't the investigation not done? And an MLA having it is one point. It, it, is, being it is being done, but yeah. it should be, uh, you know, soon. And, and, and the way Mr. Khandu comes out and says, you know, there is nothing, nothing wrong happening. 1.8 crore with an MLA. Most of the time they, they say their assets are amount, uh, around this amount, you know, and they have it. And let's not forget it is in Pasigat, which where the rally was going to happen in just few hours. And also this is not just model violation of the model code of conduct but this is also corruption under the people's representative act now tell 1951. me what is your, your proposal we do. have something called the national election fund that anybody can donate to this fund when the elections are going to happen and your name is going to be out there like you know it's going to be transparent that is what we need and, and, something and, and which and is transparent okay. not something like nothing electoral confidential. bonds let's nothing confidential okay a national election fund let, let's talk about that as well dr qureshi is is, is with us at uh, at this hour and dr qureshi you know your thoughts on this the election commission as i said took a very strong stand on this in the supreme court saying that it it's not transparent talking about the dangers of foreign companies influencing indian elections uh, i mean just to ask you straight off uh, are you know ever since demonetization and this whole so, sort of campaign against money uh, black money are we really any better off uh, at, at tackling this issue or is, is it worse or just the same as you've seen in previous elections that you've conducted 
I think we are far from uh, being better off. In fact, this is the biggest atrocity which has been committed. In fact, I'll uh, remind you of the budget speech of the finance minister in which he made two very good statements initially. He said, uh, without free and fair, without transparency of political funding, free and fair elections are not possible. And then he said that for 70 years we have failed to achieve that. So one expected that uh, they are now going to introduce transparency. And what has happened is electoral bond. Before the introduction of electoral bonds, every donation of 20,000 was reported to the election commission. Now even 20 crores and 200 crores, we will not know, nobody will know who has donated. And transparency has been taken away in the name of secrecy of the donor. Now donors may want secrecy because they want the quid pro quo to be the, the hidden, but people want transparency. We want to know if a company donated 50 crores, what uh, quid pro quo is happening? What license, contract, uh, bank loan uh, are being given to them? That is what people would like to know. So this uh, is something which has happened very, very wrong and I hope Supreme Court undoes it. One of the arguments, Dr. Qureshi, that the BJP has made, at least on this program, when it comes to electoral bonds, is that the reason... Uh, we are not uh, in favor of revealing the names of those who buy these bonds is that the opposition is going to go after them and threaten them ki aapne BJP ko paisa kyu diya. Now, is that a logical argument? That's laughable. No, it, no uh, not at all. In fact, the logic is just the uh, other way around. Hmm. Government more is, is more in a position to, the, uh, to harm these people. And uh, because if you give to the opposition, the government will come down heavily and government is more in a position to harm the donors. And which seems to be the happening that 95% of donations have, are coming to, to the ruling Sujanta party, which has never happened before. So Mr. Ghosh, just coming back to you then, in the interest of transparency, why doesn't the BJP volunteer and say that we will reveal who our donors are? We will, re you know, we, we, we will reveal it to everyone and put it on our mm. website. See, um, Nidhi, in the last debate also I mentioned why we are, uh, we are uh, keeping the name uh, confidential because today we are in power and we are almost 82% uh, of the entire land we are covering. So now being the largest party of the world, so we are getting the major chunk. Congress are having 44 seats, they, are received, they have received more than about 200-210 crores. Now the question is, that if we are do not protect our donors, tomorrow what, what Mr. Qureshi has rightly told, the opposition now, they, has, they are now howling on the Rafale issue is another. They will, they will have a linear equation that this man, this company has given 38 no, crores. Mr. Qureshi is saying the opposite of that. So many favors and it will be a, again a fictitious, again a fictitious claim, no, a fictitious you know, allegation. It, it, it actually doesn't so sound very convincing. Not only protecting because the all over the world, because all over the world in good democracies. On them by the in, other party, no, the but Mr. Ghosh, party, in, in, in all party, other then, democracies, then the, power. the donors' names are known. They are made public. And as Mr. Shastri said right at the beginning, those are the best practices that India should follow as well. What makes us so special that we have to keep the names of donors secret? No, don't forget one thing, the other economy which my uh, fellow uh, members are is telling about, they are a, not a mixed economy. The, today we are about 20 lakh crore what cash economy. economy? Like, so naturally we cannot compare with the Japan or UK or US, they are more advanced, they are more digitized what? and you their whole system is, is almost leak proof. My, so the question is that by express, today Ram, there is so many uh, religious, uh, religious outfits are here. And they are also receiving crores of crores of donations and nobody is asking because, because they are not standing are having for a political party and the are religious power, outfits are not standing so for public office, Mr. Ghosh. So everybody is asking somebody gives us money to run our political system no, no, one second. And, uh, and we should expose them. No, no. Uh, religious outfits firstly are not standing for public office. You guys are. The Congress is. Other political parties are. Uh, very simply, I, firstly, I don't no, know what, also what, with what the a mixed money. economy is. Uh, well, I don't know Any what religious leader, they are dealing with the public money. No, no, Maybe but, but they are not standing for elections. They are not standing they are for elections, dealing with the public Bush. money. They are receiving crores of, crores of uh, donations. I am sorry, but... The, you are not those, asking them to publicize the name of donors. Let them, let them go and stand that to, uh, for parliament and assembly elections and we will question them as well. Mr. Shastri, you wanted to come in. Yes, you see this whole issue of... 
the government says that uh, it will solve three problems. One is the black money. It has clearly not solved the black money problem because we are seizing thousands of crores of cash. Number two, it says that everything, uh, you know, people who donate money will be protected. Who is going to harass them? Suppose I donate money to a political party. Who is going to harass me? It is the political party, the rival political party. So just because rival political parties harass each other, why should we not have transparency? I think the one of the speakers very clearly said the lady, we should put all our money, publicly funded money into a general fund and use an That's independent body, funded. perhaps the election commission, to fund the elections and transparently, transparently. I, I want to ask Dr. Qureshi about that. That yes. Do you think a national election fund, yeah. Dr. Qureshi, uh, is something that, that is workable, that is doable? It's been talked about in the past, but we don't seem to have any sort of political consensus on this. Yes, it's a, it's a very good idea. Because uh, the reason given is that the donor wants to keep secrecy because uh, uh, parties will take uh, revenge on them. The answer is that uh, let them donate to the electoral funds from which uh, the money will be allo allocated to the parties according to the votes they have uh, secured. And uh, I have advocated and have written many articles on yeah, this that share. let there be funding of political parties, not of election, but political parties based on their performance. And I have calculated for every vote if you give you 100 rupees, last election 55 crores uh, votes were cast, at 100 rupees 5,500 crores will be available for distribution. Now these can come from the National Electoral Fund to which uh, the donors can uh, donate without fear of any reprisal. So that's a very good solution and needs to be discussed immediately now. Yeah, I want to yeah. add to what yeah. he's saying. Wonderful. You know, it's, it's a great idea to have a national uh, ele electoral fund uh, administered by the election commission. Not but I have a government. question. I have a technical and, and, question. And to this one second, Mr. Ghosh. One second, one second. Uh, Mr. Ghosh, uh, give me, give me, give me a minute. Mr. Ghosh, just a minute. Just a minute, sir. One minute. One moment. Yeah. Yeah. In, the, uh, in, in the national, national election fund, fund, who will give the certificate of... Sir, can I just finish what I'm saying? Mr. Ghosh, just the other panelists are just quickly... We also need to speak. So, Nidhi, what I'm saying, we can have a criteria. We can have the top 2,000 2, companies by profitability or turnover. In any case, they give money to political parties. Let them give it to the electoral uh, fund, fund and the election commission can create a criteria based on which it will... That uh, is... Yeah, that's I, exactly. I think, yeah. I, I think what Dr. Kureshi was saying... What I'm to then, say is that yeah. a national election fund, which we are introducing if we come to power, is very important because there is complete transparency. And always, if you have seen it, Congress party has stood for transparency. Right to information, one of the most important tools for being transparent. We enacted the Lokpal, but when is the Lokpal appointed? Right now. And what is the difference from then and now? They were saying that he was not the leader of opposition. He's a special appointee. That was the reason given till now. Why? What, what changed in the five years? I wanted to know why was he appointed at the fag end just before elections? Why not in the beginning when it was already enacted? So the Cong And they also watered down the RTI saying that it has to at be 500. At least we have Let me finish. Lokpal and what you have done to We Lokpal. enacted it. We left. We left. To I 2014, mean, you won, and you did not. You did not appoint. Why did you not appoint at the beginning of 2014? Even the aim we have appointed. What you have done in 70 years? What do you Lokpal mean 70 years? Now let me finish, Mr. Ghosh. Let me finish. And also the RTI, what they did, they watered it down to 500 words, and they said if the person dies, we can close it. That means you can go and kill the person who has filed the RTI if you want to. That's what it says. So everything which is transparent has been brought in by the Congress Party, and then and let's see. We also know what is demonetization. It was another big racket where all their corporate banks in which Mr. Uh, Shah was the head, in the first four days you could put money into corporate banks and then later on you couldn't. So and he got 700 crores, those banks. Let me ask, so, le let me ask Mr. Ghosh then. Again, this you is had a question. Your, your party is totally corrupt, Mr. Ghosh. Answered by Mr. Shah that he was never in the board of those banks. Mm. He never said that. he is. His name is there in the board of the banks. Now you cannot, and of course his son, let's not forget, 50,000 okay, to 80 crore in one year. Mr. Ghosh, Mr. Ghosh. Would your party support a national election fund? Would you support a national election fund? See, our party in principle supports any system which will carve the black money, which will trail the cash economy and which will make all the parties answerable to... Because see, even, even this, uh, uh, we are answerable to election commission. It is not that we are not answerable to anyone. We are answerable to election commission and that is already laid down the law, uh, in, in the law. So then, then we why is always want having to go to Supreme the, Court? no use of the cash money and even we are vouching for 
आप गवर्नमेंट फंडिंग इन द इलेक्शन इन द लॉन्ग रन सो मिस्टर घोष इन हैज द बीजेपी हैज द बीजेपी इज द बीजेपी नॉट यूजिंग कैश इन दिस इलेक्शन जस्ट आउट ऑफ क्यूरियोसिटी हैव सिंस वी आर सिंस वी आर डिजिटल इंडिया सिंस वी आर Since we are digital India, are election. you using credit cards Within and debit the... cards for your election expenses no. out of curiosity? Or PTM? And your MLA has one point. Can I please ask, Mr. Ghosh? No curiosity. I can give a straight reply. Yes. Within the limits limits allowed by the election commission, we are. We are um, spending money within the limits. With what is and the limit? Whatever limits? is the cash component, no, the non-cash component. Two crores. So limits. is it all digital? Most of our transfer, most of our expenditure are through bank transfers. Most of your expenditure and how much is in cash? Yes. So yesterday an MLA was so caught with 1.5 crores. Within please. the limits prescribed by election commission, we are doing it. We are not violating it at all. So what about last well, night? Not to the best of my knowledge. Okay, not to the best. So what about last night? Thank you night for adding that caveat. You were with 1.5 crores. Adding that crore. caveat. All right, I have to. I have to leave it you there. You know, Mr. Kandu should is, resign. This is a case that is already in the Supreme Court. The election commission, which is. the statutory body here has told the supreme court it does not think electoral bonds are transparent it has raised serious concerns about what they do to our election process and yet uh, we continue to see them being defended at least by the government i think uh, it's time to raise some more questions on that and maybe the court will take it up uh, sooner rather than later thank you to all of you for joining us tonight we'll be